Annette and I had been talking about women in science in general, and she knew Linnea, who's the other uh, co-investigator on, on this project, and the three of us just started talking about the workshop. I think it's really important that women have um, an opportunity to meet other women in the field and to develop networks. Um, personal networks, professional networks, uh, it's something that's very hard for uh, us to find in general. Uh, most atmospheric science departments are pretty small, don't always have a lot of women, and I think it makes it a much richer environment to have colleagues that you can work with. I felt very, very fortunate to have Linnea as my advisor as a woman in science and that I also feel a responsibility to pay that forward. Gannett mentioned very briefly last night that a few of us had gotten together. We were feeling motivated to write a proposal for Ascent because of our personal experiences. I think probably all of us have faced personal and professional challenges in our careers. And I'm sure that every one of you has a story, maybe several, that you would like to share. And we're certainly hoping to hear many of those in the next couple of days. I'm doing the assessment of this conference. My research interests are around women and minorities and science, and basically, why aren't there more women and minorities in science? And what are effective strategies to help recruit, retain, and advance more women and minorities in science? I think one of the advantages of the Ascent program is what I call uh, vertical networking. So lateral networking is what I call when you meet your peers. And it's really easy to meet peers who are working in similar fields and develop collaborations with, amongst your own cohort. But for me, one of the things that I find is difficult is doing the vertical networking where you're making, you're establishing relationships with senior scientists who are a few levels above you. And that's something that's always been challenging for me. And I think that one of the nice things about Ascent is that they've brought together this group of junior and senior scientists. So you're working on both in the lateral direction and in the vertical direction. And so the informal nature of this conference is fabulous in terms of I really have the time to individually talk with people that I might not have had at a big meeting that I would have been running here and there and you know, making sure that I saw everyone that I was supposed to see instead of taking time to really talk about the science. Well, I think there's several benefits. I mean, one is to realize for people who are early in their career to gain some skills so that they, they can be more successful. Everybody says that mentoring is so important and so helpful, but it turns out you don't want to look for a single mentor. There's no one person who's going to be able to provide you with advice in all parts of your life. Instead, you want to develop the concept of a circle of advisors. I was looking forward to the focus breakout sessions on mentoring because I am personally interested in skills that I can learn to be a good mentor. You always want to have an advocate also, someone who's looking out for you, who's promoting you, almost behind the scenes who you don't know connected you with someone or recommended you to do an NSF panel, but someone just saw you and, and said, oh, she does some really interesting science and she seems together, and so I'm gonna say, the next time I'm asked and I don't wanna do it, I'm gonna say, pick this person. People are talking science, which is a good thing. A lot of people are talking about potential science, writing papers, getting proposals done. Oh, everyone is. Clicking. Yeah, and they're <laughs> participating, they're full of Far away, everybody goes to the lab. I'm just happy to see at least female mentors. It's particularly great that um, Linnea went through pretty much the same experience as I had because we went to the same grad school. So she gets it immediately. I didn't even have to say much. <laughs> It's hard to evaluate yourself, and you might have official evaluations from your chair or you know, a reappointment or things like that, where you might get a couple bullet points of things to improve upon. But really where the mentor steps in is they help you, it's more than just a bulleted list. They have a comprehensive understanding of your career and they help you dissect it. The lab was great. All the different equipment they have, and Gannett was doing a great job of just showing us all the different type of research that goes on there, and you know, I hadn't got a full appreciation for that until I actually came up here. I love the lab. You know, I go to these places and I see their lab and I just think, oh, I, I have to work here. It's such a wonderful environment and to have people that are coming up and doing different types of research, I like that, that you're exposed to everybody's great ideas. You know, 
Um, I think that's a, a, a big benefit to running this kind of facility. We also host instruments, so if you're interested in like investigating something at high altitudes, let me know. And this is a, a CCN. A cloud condensation nuclei counter. I don't do observations, so I love seeing how hard it is for them to capture these things that I throw into a model, and and voila, I have tons of data everywhere, everything I could ever need, and they're they're out there trying to get you know a, a couple little bits of data every few hours. This data and all of our met data streams every well, it's logged every five minutes to the Western Region Climate Center, which is what Laura does. I thought it was great to see that people are working on it. I'd love to take a group of students up there um, and learn a little bit more about it. I think it was the perfect amount of science, actually. I, one of the, the best benefits was just to meet other people that are doing similar work that we could start maybe future collaborations or just know what else is going on in the field. Um, because atmospheric sciences is so broad, you can work from here all the way up to the stratosphere, and so sometimes you don't all end up at the same conference. So this has been really great. Just enough science to find out what else is going on and where some intersections could happen. I, I feel to a certain degree like these type of workshops are counted less than a science meeting in terms of tenure and things like that, that, that a meeting that is promoting women in science isn't quite taken as seriously as AGU or a Gordon conference. But I was thrilled that Gannett and Linnea had organized that we would have a poster session because then the science is there. I think that everybody here is really on board with working with other people, not even if it's just other females, but it's with other people and they're really interested in doing collaborative work and being supportive of each other. And it, I don't get that feeling of like, oh, you got those results and, uh, and I got this. And I, I'm not getting that attitude at all, which is very common when you go to a national meeting where you're like, well, my results show this and yours say that. And here I see, oh, you know what? I got this in my model and I, this might have been different for yours, but let's talk about it and work it out. Or, hey, I've got this great idea. Let's work on this, let's do that. So I just feel like everybody here has this energy to just get on board and work together and, and, and do something for the collective good of each other and for the, the science that we're doing. And that, that energy is just very, um, is great to be immersed in. There's a really a strong emphasis on collaboration now, and I'm currently in a department that no one else really does what I do. And so um, outside collaborations are really, really important for me. So I'm really hoping that there will be some overlap with some people who do experiments and observations that I can do models and theory for. And there's a young woman who's running um, regional climate models for California, which is where I have a whole bunch of surface data. And there's no way I'm going to learn how to run the Mesica model because those are really, really, really hard. But she's running it over the domain where I have all my data. So I'm thrilled So she's going to share her model output and I'll compare it with my data. The ASM program is really providing me an opportunity to not only, you know, find potential collaborators from people on my level as well as from the senior levels, but it really provides me an opportunity to talk to other women. Yeah, I definitely see collaborations happening from here. And we were talking about that, like, oh, we should write to NSF and say how this collaboration was born out of scent. I haven't been to such a thing like this, so this could be an idea, I think, for me to, to bring back to, to Europe or to Denmark. Coming from Australia, I didn't really know many uh, young female atmospheric scientists. So just being able to build that network has been fantastic.